As you saw previously, we've started stripping the engine and now we've taken the tappy chest cover off, ready to strip the engine down to change the gasket between the crankcase and the barrel that's the main job we're doing on this engine. So there's lots to do yet, the pistons have got to come out, the sump has got to come off and uh, we're going to change all the gaskets while we're doing this job because it's not worth leaving old gaskets to leak when the engine's all back together. Okay, my job on this engine strip down is to release all the sump bolts, apart from a couple on each side. We're going to take the fuel pump off at the top of the engine and also we're going to release all the bolts that hold on the bell housing. There's one bolt. RT water pump. What we'll do now is strip these plates off, make new gaskets and make sure everything's all good inside before we put it back on the engine. Okay so that's the last one on this side. I've left this one on but nice and loose. Just going to do the other ones on the other side now. Okay, here we are on the other side of the engine and we're going to continue undoing these sump bolts. There looks like there's about 11 on this side, but I think this stand is going to have to come off. This is the stand for the fuel pump. This is where the fuel pump sits, uh, but I'm guessing there's some more of these bolts underneath here. In fact, I can feel them. There definitely are. So this. This stand for the fuel pump is going to come off as well. First one. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're going to be putting in the comments below. You're going to be saying, why the hell aren't you using power tools to undo these nuts and bolts? And that is a very good question. And we've got a very good answer. And the answer is, our snap-on power tool has broken. So we need to get a new one but they're very expensive, so we have to wait. So I've undone all the bolts for the bellows in and uh, now this can come off. He says. <laughs> it's amazing for a casting that big, that lifting of my little finger. There's no weight in that at all. <laughs> they put the two bolts in the draw bolt holes. And we'll whiz them up with the battle gun and that will de-seat the flywheel and allow us to run the arse of the oil out of it which is bound to make the flywheel 
We're stripping the engine down today and uh, we've already taken the flywheel off over where the engine was in front of the bus but we didn't have enough room there to uh, flip it on its side and take the sump off so we can take the pistons in. So we've moved it over here and we're going to lay it on a pallet on its side. You're going to need to take those starter straps off and lay it on this side, aren't you? Um, yeah, because you're going to have to go on this side because you can't, you can't risk this side because you've got that bit of the block sticking out but you, you'll end up bending the point for if you're not careful. So I wouldn't, lift, I wouldn't lay it on the left. It's too much to damage. You've got a spring retainer for the fuel pump for the throttle return. You've got the dipstick tube. You've got the throttle rod, you've got the drive for the steering, uh, for the pump and everything. That side's going to be much safer. Taking the uh, bearing caps off, then we can take the pistons out. Go on. Once you get it start, started, come out and touch them. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Can you get this somewhere in there? To prevent breaking the piston rings, we're bringing them out compressed in a ring compressor and then we can release them carefully with the spring compressor. Whereas if you don't do that, as you push the pistons out, the ring will suddenly release. It's spring steel, probably 70 years old. There's a good chance the ring will shatter 
as it releases all of a sudden and comes out the top of the block. So to try and prevent that, we're keeping the rings compressed and then we can release them with a spring compressor, which we can do in a measured manner rather than them just suddenly having no tension on them. Right, okay, gently does it then. We'll get this one out and we'll do the next one. Whoa! That one's out. How many rings is it? Three or five, it will depending. Probably five on this because it's not an LT engine. LT engine is generally three. Why did others have five? Um, the reason LT only went with three is because they didn't want gla the problem of glazing up. And because they sit around a lot, bus engines, because they're doing very little work, they deemed that they didn't need five rings, they only needed three. So to prevent glazing up, they also have thinner rings. They're, on a Routemaster engine, they're three ring pistons with a thinner ring. But all six, 690s and 590s that are for any other application, pretty much a fire ring piston. Right. So, right, okay, just push that through a little bit more, just a smidge. Yeah, there is a bit of a, there is a bit of a um, lip in the balls, but it's weird because they didn't seem to be loose. So, it's strange, right, I can come out then. Oh, well that piston ring is NFG to start with. What's that? That piston ring, look. Yeah. Top one. And that's been broken a long time, look. Dirty, isn't it? Yeah, it's been broken years. So, so we need a ring. We'll get the ring compressor off it. Well, it's a good clean up, it looks alright. I mean, there's, there's no play in those rings at all, really. Like the, you know, the they are in the pin. You can see where that ring was welded to the ball. Can you? It's only ever so slight. Yeah. You just see a mark. If you catch it in the light, you can just see a very faint mark where the where the ring was stuck to the ball. It's just left like a hairline, you know, like the two mm -hmm. lines either side of the stack. That's all the pistons out of the engine, and we have found a little bit of damage and some wear um, that we will show you. So the next job to do is stand it up, and we're going to take the bar barrel off the crankcase and uh, see where we go from there. Now the plan probably is to have these machines out and to put oversized pistons in to uh, sort our problems out, but we'll show you the broken rings. the engine again and we're going to set on a pallet. The next job is take all these small nuts off and the bigger ones that hold the barrel to the crankcase and we lift the barrels off and this is probably going to go away to have the uh, balls machine now because of the, the damage that we had on the pistons. Um, they're standard size so they can go up to take oversized pistons. Um, 
Let's get on with it. All the nuts are now off the barrel and we're ready to lift it off. So, fork lift time and uh, put it around the strap on the top and it should come clean off in one piece, hopefully. Okay, so we've now got the engine fully dismantled and considering how well it ran, there are a number of issues that we've highlighted. There's excessive amount of play in the top rings, that's quite serious, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that on camera, but there's quite a distinct amount of play on those top rings. So the pistons are well worn, so that's one issue that we've got, which we think may well be from its life possibly as a fire engine in its time as a fire engine engine, that's a bit of a mouthful, um, or possibly I believe it was a generator at one point after that. So it's probably run under quite heavy load quite fast from cold, which is probably the cause of that, which has consequently put quite a distinct um, sort of lip in the top of the, top of the bore. So that's gonna need looking at. The other thing is we noticed that when we got pistons number one and number two out, Number two came out first and came out with the piston ring in two halves, which has been like it quite some time because you can see by the dirt on the brakes, there's no, there's no clean metal brake there. So that's been like that sort of quite some time. We believe there's marks inside the liners which would suggest that the engine was stood for many years without being turned and it is a big issue, big issue if you have an engine stored up for a long time, especially with these big engines of the size these are. You get a lot of, lot of moisture inside the block builds up. Consequently, it's probably rusted up slightly and caused the ring to actually rust onto the bore. We think probably then it was awoken from its slumbers, probably by starting it up and running it fairly hard, where in an ideal world it should have probably been WD-40 or plus gas down the bores and perhaps wound over carefully. That said, there's a bigger issue than that. We got number one out and the ring came out of number one, two big segments, but then it also came out with two very small parts, um, which you probably on camera can't do justice to, but they've actually been rattling around inside the ring groove for so long, they've actually machined themselves away to the point where they've actually got, no longer got sharp corners. They're actually nicely rounded like a pebble on a beach. And if we look at this piston, can clearly see that that is where that tiny segment has been rattling around up and down in there. So incredible that it ran as well as it did. It didn't seem to burn any oil or particularly smoke. I mean, obviously the oil control rings were both in place, but incredible that it ran as well as it did given the, the destruction that's been happening. So that's clearly been like that a very long time. That's not something that's happened in, in recent times. That's been like that over thousands of hours of running, I would, I would say. So we've got that, and number six has got damage on the top of the pistons as well, which we don't know what's hit it, obviously, but there's no signs on the head that it's that something's hit, that a valve's hit it or anything, but there is marks on the top of the pistons. So the long and short of it is it's gonna need six pistons, um, and it's gonna need the, the bores either machining out or if, they can't, if we can't find oversized pistons, then it will need liners changed. So, so that's where we're currently at. So next we'll uh, have a look at the bores and see if you can see the scoring, see if we can get that clear on the camera to show you the, the marks in the bores from the rust marks and also the, the wear marks from where the uh, top ring's been 
obviously getting to the top of its travel and rocking. We've now got the barrel outside and we've got the sump outside as well and we're giving both of them all a good clean with the gunk and the hot wash to get all that old oil out that's been sat in there for years as its various uses as an engine, as, uh, both in a fire engine and a uh, generator as Tim was saying possibly. Back inside the unit now, we're working on the crankcase, which we inverted earlier, and we're taking the main bearing caps off, so removing the split pins and taking the nuts off, and then we can lift the crankshaft out and uh, measure all the journals up to see whether we need to replace the bearing. So we don't want to lose our timing marks because they don't have any timing marks in them. So when you remove the crankshaft, if you don't mark your idler gear and your pump drive and camshaft, you won't lose the timing between the pump drive and the camshaft so they both run half speed from the same idler. But if you get the crankshaft back in in the wrong place, you'll end up with your cam timing and your pump timing out. So I'm putting dots two dots in the end of the pump drive and I'll put a single dot on the gear that fits between the two on the idler here and I'm going to do the same again on the camshaft so then we know that they haven't come out of line because we'll know that those have got to be in mesh for it to be in the right place for putting the cram crank back in and we put the crank at top dead centre so we know that as long as we put the crank back in at top dead centre, we won't lose our timing marks. So our timing will go back where it started off. It's there, and that dot there. But that is actually that gear there that's meshed. So you just need to make sure that you know that they've actually got to line up like that and not, because that isn't that gear slot. It's that gear slot. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just take some pictures, I would soon know. But I'm gonna do the same again there. I mean, theory says if this one's right, then it wouldn't matter what you do there, but I will, I'll mark that anyway. I'm quite surprised they've, they've, they've punched quite nicely. It's normally a so hard gear wheel, isn't it? It's just the punch just skims off them and goes flying across the workshop. Well, as it did, but that was because I didn't have a good hold of it. Let's have a look, where are we? Right, I'll do the same again on here. So again, that's the gear below, but the marks work in a triangle, yeah? So that gear is actually this slot here, but again, they need to register in a triangle, and the same as they do here. So, so that allows you now, you can turn all this round and clean it up, and if you need to dismantle any of this, or if you so desire to in the end, you find it's wearing a cam bearing to an end, you can pull it apart now. The casting probably wasn't utterly perfect when it was made. What it was like, you sort of think, mm, get yourself in a big mess. There's your telltale, there's no 
There's no discernible lip in the centres of them. There's a little bit on that, but I think that's probably more a carbon build-up than actual wear. Where you've got a hollow in the centre of the bearings on one and yeah. seven, and, and on the centre as well. But there's nothing. That's where you normally. That gives you a good indication. So if you can feel that, then your crank's well worn, and there's nothing. You can see it, but you can't feel it, can you? No. So the crank's pretty good. He just clean up the clean up the journals there, Marie, and stick it back again with a new set of bearings, probably. Are you ready? Right, it's going to roll. So watch your fingers. Right, pull it. Finally, after all that tossing and turning of the engine, we've got everything all in bits, stripped down, ready to look for the new parts. That's mainly the big end and, well, most of the parts actually, but main and big end bearings, um, pistons and liners and lit lens as well, and uh, it'll be like a new engine when it all goes back together. The bits are quite hard to find, so it might take us a while to get all the bits together. Thanks to Lord Barrington for all his help in stripping the engine down and uh, measuring everything up for the new bits. In the next video we'll start putting this engine back together, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel for more updates. So from me, Tim and everybody else at Rootmaster for Hire, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. <laughs>